Christians believe that the Bible is revelation from God and base their beliefs around the words of scriptures. Unfortunately, most just accept that the Bible is the complete word of God without even knowing how, when, by whom, and by what authority it came into existence. In order to be absolutely sure that the Bible is God's word and to appreciate its message, we need to understand its history and how God, through the Holy Spirit, gave us his inspired message. The Bible, Greek word meaning books, is God's divine love letter to us. It is the history of God's family that shows the fall and return to God by his people. The Bible is the inspired words of God written in the words of men. The complete Bible that we have today was written approximately between 2000 BC and 100 AD. The first half of the Bible is called the Old Testament because it was written before the coming of Christ and it contained the story of God's people and how they became his chosen family. The Old Testament tells us of the series of covenants that God made with his people leading up to the birth of his son Jesus Christ. Most of the Old Testament was written in Hebrew because it was composed by Jews for the Jewish people. The Old Testament remained in Hebrew until the Babylonian exile when Jews left Palestine to settle in other areas. As a result, the Hebrew language was replaced by Greek as the main language for Jews living outside of Palestine. Approximately 280 BC, the world's greatest library in Alexandria obtained books from the known world, translating them into Greek. At this time, the Hebrew Old Testament was translated by 70 rabbis into the Greek language and was called the Septuagint, the Latin word meaning 70. The Septuagint contained 46 books. This Greek translation was the acknowledged Bible of the Jews and was the version used by Christ and his disciples. We know that the Septuagint was used during the time of Jesus because approximately 350 references were made to the Old Testament by the writers of the New Testament. Over 300 refer to the Septuagint and not the Hebrew version of scriptures. Just one example of this is from Mark 7, 6 through 8, where Jesus is discussing human tradition. He quotes a version of the passage from Isaiah 29:13, found only in the Septuagint. Judaism did not make an official decision about which books belonged to its Bible until approximately the end of the first century. Jews from a rabbinical school in Jevna met around year 80 and, among other things, discussed the canon. These leaders rejected seven books from the Septuagint and established the Hebrew canon. This definition of scriptures was made after most of the apostles were dead and much of the New Testament was written. These leaders were extremely anti-Christian. They also rejected the New Testament writings at the time. The seven books that were rejected by these rabbis were Tobit, Judith, 1 and 2 Maccabees, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch, and portions of Daniel and Esther. This still did not settle the Pharisee canon since not all Jews agreed with or even knew about the decision at Jevna. Rabbis continued to debate it into the 2nd and 3rd centuries. Even today, the Ethiopian Jews use the same Old Testament as Catholics. The New Testament was written approximately between 50 and 100 AD after Christ ascended to heaven. The early churches did not have the complete New Testament writings to follow as we do today but used the oral tradition of the apostles to know the truth that was taught by Jesus as well as the Old Testament scriptures. During that time, however, there were hundreds of writings all claiming to be inspired circulating among the early churches. A few examples were the Didache, Shepherd of Hermas, Gospel of Thomas, Acts of John, Acts of Thomas, Acts of Paul, and the Apocalypse of Peter. There were an estimated 50 versions of the Gospels and 22 Acts in circulation. Unfortunately, there was not unanimous consensus among the churches and the church fathers on which writings were actually inspired. A study of early Christian history shows that there was a considerable disagreement among Christians until the issue of the canon was finally settled. Some early Christians said that the book of Revelations didn't belong in the canon. God allowed the inspired writings to be collected into the canon of the Bible under the divine guidance of the Holy Spirit. 
He worked through the authoritative Catholic Church that Christ established and allowed them to determine which books were to be considered inspired scriptures. The Church met in councils, similar to what is described in Acts 15, and made the decision of what books to accept as inspired. A council met in Hippo in 393 AD, where it selected the 27 books of the New Testament and re-ratified the 46 books of the Old Testament. Again in 397 AD, the Council of Carthage confirmed and approved the decrees of the previous council. Pope Innocent I, in 405 AD, approved this African code. Presently, the 27 books of the New Testament and the 46 books of the Old Testament have been affirmed seven times by a general council and three times by an ecumenical council. As a result of these councils, the canonized Bible contains 73 books. We have no other assurance that the books of Moses, the four Gospels, and the other books are the true word of God, but by the canon of the Catholic Church. St. Augustine for the next 1,100 years, the canon of the Christian Bible contained 73 books. In the 1500s, when Martin Luther rejected the authority of the Catholic Church and started the Reformation, he decided that seven books in the Old Testament were not on the same level as the other books in the Bible. He also questioned the inspiration of four books of the New Testament, James, Jude, Hebrews, and Revelation. Today. There is a difference in the number of books and Bibles belonging to Catholics and Protestants. The Catholic Bible contains the original 73 books that were canonized in the 4th century, while the Protestant Bible followed Luther's concern of the inspiration of the seven books in the Old Testament. As a result, Protestants eventually omitted seven books from the Old Testament and now have only 66 books in their version. However, it is interesting to note that Martin Luther, in the 16th chapter of his commentary on St. John, noted, We are obliged to yield many things to the Papists, the Catholics, that they possess the word of God which we received from them. Otherwise, we should have known nothing at all about it. No wonder Catholics find it strange that some people would rather put their faith on the authority of Martin Luther than on the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of truth.